Okay. Good morning, everybody, and um, thank you uh, to the planning group for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk about a digester that uh, was monitored uh, following a, a protocol of using the guideline. So um, <clears throat> hopefully this doesn't lock up on me because my slides build, and uh, it'll be a disaster if it locks up. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a background overview, and then give you the basically take-home messages, the uh, the main results, talk about some of the more details, um, and then uh, conclude from there. Okay, being as that we're in Washington State, I'm, I'm currently living in upstate New York, I thought it'd be good to show, oh, it has a mind of its own, uh, that uh, we're over here in the northeast corner of the United States, if you don't know, know that. Um, New York State is the third or fourth largest dairy state in the country. Um, some of the greatest dairy producers that I've ever talked to and worked with, I'm fortunate enough to uh, gotten to know in New York State. So good place to be a dairy farmer. Um, in New York State there's uh, about 22 operating digesters today. Uh, there's some in planning, there's some that uh, have uh, been decommissioned, and uh, we've been, uh, there's even a duck farm digester on uh, Long Island which is that little uh, off red color triangle. So um, quite a distribution of digesters, a lot of interest. Um, we'll see if that continues the, the funding from the uh, agency that's been active involved for many, many years is uh, getting ready to go away. Um, so this is just shows a little bit about how the growth of the industry's uh, taken place since 1998, which is when the, sort of there was a really reinterest by the industry in digestion and reinterest, reinfusion of some money. So the, uh, the red bars is the cumulative cows providing manure to a digester, and the yellow bars behind it or superimposed behind it is the cumulative uh, capacity of generating electricity. Uh, you'll see this only goes to 2012. Um, generally, the trend is ch continuing uh, into 2014, um, and we'll get some more this year, and then we'll see again. So I'm going to talk to you about the Synergy Farm, Synergy Digesters, lo uh, located in Wyoming County, which is in western New York. Um, funding for this monitoring project came from the Wyoming County Industrial Development Corporation and uh, also from the Cornell Pro Dairy Program. So this is an uh, <coughs> image of the uh, digester in the foreground, uh, the dairy facilities in the background, there's four um, six row freestall barns, uh, total around 1900 cows um, on the facility. So the uh, big tank in the middle, big green tank, that's the digester. Um, on the right and a little bit closer to me is uh, post digestion storage and uh, containerized systems. So in the foreground there you see a couple containers, this is where the engine gen set is, the control systems um, and things like that. And the very foreground is a big flare. Uh, <coughs> The, uh, this system is rather unique. Uh, this is the first Danish digester from Bigadan, which is a Danish company built in the United States. Um, and uh, it's pretty common in, in Denmark to, uh, well actually I think it's law in Denmark, to um, <coughs> pasteurize manure either before or after digestion if it's co-digested and it's going back to a farm. And so this technology just came in as part of the system. So there's three units in the, in the uh, foreground here, um, silver tanks, those are pasteurizers, they're batch, batch action um, pasteurizers. Uh, okay, so um, there's a gas cleanup system, it's a microbial based system, so on the left is the digester, um, in the center here is the gas cleanup system, and on the right is that post digestion storage. Um, so there's media in the digester, or excuse me, in the, uh, the uh, gas cleanup system. So we, uh, I'm showing you this because we, we, we also looked at the performance of the gas cleanup system. Uh, Bigadan system does some uh, preheating of manure. So this is an influent effluent heat exchangers. Um, heat's very valuable in Denmark. Uh, they sell the heat. Um, here it's, hasn't, that opportunity hasn't been uh, taken advantage of yet, but it's part of the system. Lots of co-digestion for this d d digester. Uh, so many, many truckloads of uh, material coming in um, to be co-digested with the manure from the cows. So the protocol that we use is a guideline. We don't follow it exactly. Um, all we do use is a guideline. Um, it does require, it does suggest uh, at least uh, 12 months of monitoring, which this, this project actually was 24 months. Um, it should be uh, started after the um, system is up and running for at least five hydraulic retention times. Uh, supposedly that's going to be steady state. Um, I would question that just through my experience of all the monitoring. Um, monthly influent effluent biogas sampling. Um, in this particular project we did do monthly um, and some of the other ones we've done uh, twice a month. 
generally, basically, the way I look at this, the, 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 the protocol, there's three parts. One is basically assess the performance of the digester converting biomass to biogas. Uh, the second one is basically how well is that biogas bio being utilized? What's, the, what's that all about? And then the economics. So I'm going to go through these three major things as part of, uh, of uh, talking about the Synergy Digester. Um, we have done, we have looked at uh, eight other farms in the past. So if anybody's interested in other digestion and monitoring using this protocol as a guideline, um, there's several of those um, that we've done and those reports are all available on our website. So as far as the findings uh, from the Synergy Project, um, the farm basically started, uh, well, let me back up. This, this, uh, this digester is also a little bit unique in, in New York. It's the Synergy digester is owned by a third party. Um, it's not owned by the dairy farmer. So there's a business arrangement between the uh, digester owner and the uh, dairy farm. Um, but anyway, the, it was constructed in 2011. The system was monitored from uh, June 2012 to May 2014. Um, overall, about 80,000 gallons uh, per day of manure went to the digester from, a, from a, on average, uh, almost 1,900 dairy cows, 1,891. About 25% of the influent overall uh, was imported substrates. Um, and you can see the standard deviation on that, plus or minus 6%. It wasn't a lot of variation there on a volume basis. Uh, the hydraulic retention time, basically we know the volume, we know the influent going in, so it was around 29 days on average. A little bit more, a little bit less on some days. Um, <coughs> the uh, Previous uh, talks talked about the uh, reduction in organic matter, so basically where organic matter is becoming biogas through a, the digestion process. So here on average, the, uh, over the course of the whole two years, 42% of the organic matter um, became biogas. So that's pretty good um, compared if I think about a lot of the other projects that we've monitored. Um, the uh, valve, uh, bottle fatty acid reduction, 75%, that's a good thing if you're a dairy farmer or other farmer looking for odor control. Um, it's also a good sign the digest was working well. Um, <clears throat> so people say, well, how much gas did it produce? Almost, 5, 000, almost 500 cubic feet per day per thousand pounds of wet influent. That probably doesn't mean a whole lot to most of us. Um, I like to think, from a dairy background, I like to think of things on a per cow basis, although this is a little bit misrepresentative, but thinking about other digesters that co-digested on dairy farms, I'm going to tell you it's about 773 cubic feet of gas per cow per day. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. So obviously that can change depending on the amount of influent that's brought in for our uh, substrates from all site. But just as a general comparison, that's, that's a number that we tend to go to. Um, okay, so there's a 1.4, or there was a 1.4 megawatt uh, internal combustion engine. Um, so on average they produced about 23 um, megawatt hours of electricity per day. Um, about 14% of that energy produced, electrical energy produced, went back to run the system. So the parasitic electrical energies is 14% uh, of what's produced. Um, the capacity factor is a little low. Um, actually, there's a lot of opportunity to improve here. 0.66%, or 0.66, I'm sorry, capacity factor, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a comparison um, of the energy generated over a given time compared to what could have been generated over the given time if the system ran full tilt the whole time. So uh, I visited, uh, I've been over to Europe five times to look at digesters and, and integrate over there. Um, the Germans will say to me, well, if we're not at 0.92 or 0.93, we're not going to be able to make our economic uh, projections. So we're, we're, losing, we're leaving a third, of, almost a third of that behind here right now. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there. I will say that this farm um, went through, this, the, the operators of this system did a great job um, they had never run a digester before. They're working with Denmark Danish technology. Um, you can just imagine um, the school up and uh, learning curve there. Um, and uh, the capacity factor is much better now. Um, so the engine ran about 80% of the time, which uh, I'll, I'll show you some details of that in a minute. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting one. 42% uh, 40 of the energy in the biogas was converted to electricity by the engine generator cell. How many people who know this topic would say that's pretty high? Right. I was very skeptical that that was actually going to take place. Very skeptical. Um, but um, we measured it. Um, you know, we had good gas data. We took uh, uh, accurate measurements of the uh, concentration 
of the methane and the gas, and we have good records of the engine generating stuff performance. Um, so this is a GE Yumbacher, um, and I've seen others uh, report pretty high numbers uh, across the, the Atlantic. Um, we've never seen anything this high. Uh, I was always very much skeptical of the numbers that high, but we did measure them. Uh, of the, uh, the total, total biogas thermal energy, 13% of it basically was harvested and went back into uh, eating the digester on average. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> okay, the economics, that's the last part and probably one of the most interesting parts to most people. Um, <clears throat> so we don't have really good economic numbers, uh, not because we didn't try, but um, as Craig said, you know, there's some business um, information that's out that the farmers have, the companies have, and I can understand where they don't want to share everything. But I can tell you that about $57,000 a month came in as a result of selling electricity and the wrecks. We have no idea what the tipping fees were. We weren't privy to that, and I can respect that. So when the uh, protocol suggests do a really thorough economic analysis, um, we, we've been challenged to, to do that on any of them because it, it, it's very difficult to get the data um, put together. So there's a complete report available on our website, um, www. Uh, manure management .edu. Um, so um, <clears throat> let me just talk a little bit about uh, more of the specifics um, one of the things is collecting lots and lots and lots of influent effluent samples so generally the way this goes is the person out there takes over about an hour time a bunch of grab samples puts them in a single bucket blends them together and then pulls a composite sample out of that preserves it sends it in this case we send it to a commercial lab that's, uh, that's been certified and to run the analysis. Um, so even with all that in place, you're still only really getting you know, one hour of one day, once a month, right, of the influent effluent. So it really is a spot sample, but uh, you know, there are limitations to how much can be done. So again, I mentioned the stuff went to a lab, commercial lab, we basically used, they, they used EPA or standard methods depending on the uh, criteria. Um, so that's for the nutrients. Um, think about the stabilization process. So, you know, the degree of waste stabilization, that's one of the, the, the big things the protocol goes through. Um, we look at the percent change between the influent effluent of all of the, of the COV, BOD, and total solids, volatile solids. And so this is a graph um, chart, if you would. So these are the sampling dates. Um, and this is a zero line here. So if we're above that line, basically there's a reduction and the parameter if you're below, there's an increase. And so basically this um, <coughs> should that the, just as we would expect, the bottle uh, fatty acids decrease, CO2 decrease, and basically that becomes <coughs> that ring in my ear. Um, pH, um, total solids uh, decrease, bottle solids decrease, just as we would expect. So a lot of you are familiar with this stuff. It's, it's very, very much what we predicted. Um, so I've already mentioned in the summary that 80, about 80 percent of BFAs became were, uh, were removed. COD 54 percent, 57 percent of vials followed solids. Um, we didn't really spend a lot of time on the nutrients, so the, the protocol talks that we did. We did do. We, we thought since we've done nutrients so much in the past, we don't really know what to do. But what we did do is we told the farm what the increase in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium they were going to be getting because of this co-digestion. And um, what that would mean to their comprehensive nutrient management plan, and so that's I'm not going to share that information. It's in the report. Uh, just in the interest of time, I left it out. So we didn't look at the effects on co-digestion. We just looked at how much additional nutrients were going back to the farm. <coughs> it also talks about doing bench scale trials. Um, didn't do those. Um, not in the scope of work. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to afford to do that. And the pathogens, we also didn't do that. We've done that at Nazi in the past. It's expensive to do. And so if you're interested in pathogens. Digesters do do a good job of destroying uh, pathogens. So these are a lot of farms measured, monitored in the past, percent change on the uh, y-axis. And um, <clears throat> so if you look at map, map it basically is the only is, is, um, disease, it's a dairy cow disease, it's like Crohn's disease for people. And then fecal coliform, really, really good reductions to the digestion process. Um, think about the biogas production. Um, Basically, all the meters were new. They were all calibrated before they were installed. 
um, so we didn't have to pull meters and calibrate them. We did adjust for um, moisture vapor in the gas. Um, Brian Richards is a colleague at Cornell, been there for a long time. Um, worked with Bill Jewell, so they do a little document with digestion. Um, you'll recognize that name. So he came up with this equation in 91 that basically calculate the, uh, con the concentration of water vapor in the biogas. And so if you take that number, plug it into um, ideal gas law, we can get the volume uh, of the um, water vapor in biogas. So we did use that, and overall about 8.5% eight, eight um, of the biogas was moisture over the course of this project. Um, you might look in the past, a lot of people don't report on them. It's not, they basically say the gas is saturated. Um, we're actually calculated the amount of moisture. Um, this is just so on the left here, number one, all the way over to 24. So period, basically every period was one month. So started at one, zero months and went all the way to 24 months. And this basically just shows the variation of, of, of biogas production on a lactating cow basis. Um, only lactating cows were providing manure to this digester. Um, so very, very typical, we know gas is going up and down, uh, especially when food waste um, supplies were going up and down as well. But again, I already mentioned 173 uh, cubic feet per, cast, per cow per day is what was there. Um, we did look at the scrubber and the performance of the scrubber um, um, pre and post. And um, so this is just basically, um, oh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I'm sorry. This is moisture collected gas. Overall, we we're about 60% methane. And that's pretty typical too. That was before the scrubber. Um, so the protocol also talks about looking at uh, composition of CO2, methane, hydrogen sulfide um, on a bi-weekly basis, or, uh, uh, and then also looking at it more in depth on a quarterly. We brought a basically a nice handheld unit um, that does uh, real-time gas measurements, and every time we went out and used that, that's where we collected our data. So we didn't do any lab, lab work. Um, so these, uh, boy, these colors are quite interesting to me. Um, these pale yellow colors is the efficiency of the um, scrubber as far as reducing hydrogen sulfide. So you can see um, that it uh, also is going up and down, changing quite a bit. Um, and so overall, about 62% per, um, affects the efficiency of reducing hydrogen sulfide by the biogas scrubber. Sometimes it was nothing, sometimes it was high. Um, for example, here, um, the scrubber wasn't working very good at all. So that, I will say that the, the, uh, the crew that runs the digester uh, ran it during the time that we uh, monitored, it's changed now. Um, that was one of the things they complained about a lot was the old that gas scrubber. Uh, yes. Basically, if you're interested in how much thermal energy is produced, um, 4,800 uh, MMBTUs per period, uh, that's doesn't probably have a lot of interest, but when we think about the electricity, electricity production, that's where we can uh, see some interest. So here's the uh, average daily energy generate megawatt hours for um, over the period of time. So each one of those would represent about a month worth of data. Um, so you can see like number five, um, low biogas production CHP challenges were there. Um, CHP, unit was CHP unit was down, some pretty low numbers. Um, biogas production went down, um, mechanical problems, uh, so you know, just you know, things were up and down and a lot of opportunities to make improvements there. 23 megawatt hours per day is, is generally what was produced. Um, thermal conversion efficiency, I mentioned in the executive summary um, that uh, it was about 44% 44, 44 after period 10, so once basically those things settle down a little bit. At least the conversion efficiency was pretty well. This was really good. Um, so some good information there. Um, this is, has to do with the capacity factor and online efficiency. So by period, again, the online efficiency is the lighter blue. The capacity factor superposed on top is the darker blue. Um, so anytime we see a bar, a bar like this, it's a good thing. First off, it's a pretty good capacity factor. The online time is pretty good. Um, hopefully we see blue bar as high as the, uh, the, the dark blue bar as high as the light blue bar, but uh, again, there's some opportunity for that to happen. And um, so I already mentioned uh, 60, 0.66 on the capacity factor, 80% uh, running time. 
So why was the system down? Basically, we were able to pull together some information on that. The biggest item was mechanical um, challenges, problems, learning curves, the operators, things like that. Um, process, that has to do with the, the uh, more of the process in the digester about 20% of the time. And then scheduled maintenance only 88% of the time. Um, <clears throat> so the heat, again the heat that's recovered from the engine generator set used to run the digester, about 13% of that heat um, was initially in the thermal, the thermal heat of the biogas went to operate the digester. So a pretty good system as far as that's concerned. Um, this is the energy generated per period, parasitic energy um, taken away. So again, about 13, 14%. Um, of the energy generator was required to run the digester. And th those numbers are generally, in, you know, what we've seen from other systems, so no, no surprise there. Uh, the protocol talks about doing some gas, greenhouse gas uh, implications due to the digester. Uh, we didn't do that. Um, uh, some folks over at RIT in Rochester, uh, they, did th they did that part of the project and have a nice uh, uh, report put together. So that stuff was done by somebody else. Um, last couple slides and it'll be finished. Uh, the economic analysis uh, protocol saw about a cash flow approach, makes sense. Um, coming up with the annual capital cost, um, annual operating maintenance cost, and the revenue. Um, coming up with an annual capital cost probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, if you might just about that, it's, it's, uh, it's not that hard to do. This operating cost and maintenance cost. Uh, is, 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 is difficult. Uh, farms are not going to be interested in taking and maintaining records required to do those kind of things. Um, <coughs> revenue is not too hard to do. Uh, farms know what their revenue is on these projects generally. So for this pro for this particular project, the overall capital cost was uh, almost eight million dollars, seven million seven hundred seventy-five thousand um, dollars, and uh, so the itemized cost for all the big items are listed there. Uh, so almost an eight million dollar project. Uh, they did get a total of a thousand or a million dollars uh, in uh, revenue or from um, NYSERDA as far as grant. And the way that's structured currently, um, you have basically a $200,000 capacity payment. That's, a, that's basically a capital up front. And then you got to earn the other $800,000 um, over up to three year period. Uh, so performance based payments. Um, I mentioned electrical, uh, the revenue side a little bit in the executive summary. Uh, $45 a megawatt hour is what the uh, uh, energy was sold for, um, and the recs are about $50 a megawatt hour. No information on tipping fees available, and uh, again, that's, that's fine. So um, if we look at that, and we look at the amount of electricity produced per month, which we recorded, uh, on average, about fifty-seven thousand dollars in revenue for a project costing seven point seven five million dollars. Okay, so um, I can tell you from doing a lot of these things. I actually dug this slide up from the previous talk that I gave a couple years ago. I didn't change it. Up. I didn't change the slide at all. Mass flow quantification is, is, is key on these on these systems. So, Dr. Fair mentioned that from the mass flow. Um, it's key, and it's not easy to do. Uh, a lot of times the meters aren't in place to do it. Um, then we also will start questioning the data from these meters if you, if you know a little bit about how much more it has for this. Um, implementation of the CPA certain protocol, uh, it's beyond the scope of, of farms to do this in general. Um, it does provide some interesting information. It does allow us to do some comparisons between, between systems that they were done. In an in a, in a unbiased and accurate way, so there is some value there. Um, <coughs> as far as um, getting more digesters out there, um, there's 50. There's, so when I came to Cornell 18 years ago, there was over 8,000 dairy farms in New York. Now there's a little under 5,000. That's not a very good impact statement for me, is it? <laughs> um, Zero digesters when I came, 22 today. So there's 22 operating digesters and about 4,900 dairy farms. A lot of opportunity, but not a lot of adoption. Why not? The economics. There's no bad reasons for having digesters except the economics. Okay, so 
I also didn't change this slide. I figured this, this is part of something I borrowed too. Why are we here? Networking opportunities, share knowledge, looking for new opportunities, uh, presenting products, services for sale, learning about amic digestion, money opportunities, whatever. We all have reasons why we're here, right? Well, one of the reasons I'm here is for the future for my kids. Because there's a lot of opportunity here, and I think we have a lot of opportunity to be better stewards of our environment. I'm not an environmentalist, but I know that there is a lot of opportunity to do better. So, if you want to know more about our program, you can go to our website and um, have fun. Thank you.